Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to my channel Bookables. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I'm very excited to do and that is my favorite thriller reads of all time. So if you don't know, I have recently, not recently, it's been a good like five years since I've started reading thrillers. I want to say my first thriller I read was in 2015 maybe, I'm not sure, but either way, I am kind of just really into thrillers and I have read a lot. I think when I've done past favorite thrillers I didn't have much to pull from because I don't know what it is about thrillers. It takes a lot for me to like love them but I have a big old stack of books that I want to share with you that are just my favorite thrillers of all time that I can't recommend enough that I think that you would love as well. So let's get into it because we have got a lot to talk about. These are in no particular order by the way. I'm just going to go whatever I see in front of me. First up, we have Hell Before Dark by Riley Sager. Riley Sager is a very well-known mystery thriller author. I've read all of his books. Some I've really loved, some I have not loved. Like his latest release, did not like that at all. But my favorite of his has to be Home Before Dark. This is a haunted, like, um, this is a haunted house book. If you want a book that is perfect for fall, perfect for Halloween, spooky, spooky vibes, this one is for you. This is about a character named Maggie who, um, her and her family, like, lived in this really old mansion when she was young. They lived in it for, like, a month, and then they escaped the night because they were petrified. And she never had any memory of it because she was only, like, seven. But now it's years later. Her dad died, and he left her the keys to the mansion, and she goes back to figure out is this place really haunted or not? And it gets really creepy. It gets great. I love it. Perfect book to read in Halloween. Definitely my favorite Riley Sager book for sure. Next up we have my favorite thriller that I've read this year in the year of 2022 and that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This was released last year but I read it this year and ah I loved it so much. If you want a great mystery thriller about some really unlikable characters, this book is for you. And I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive. Why would I want to read a book about unlikable characters? I get it. I usually hate books like that. If I can't find a character that I connect with and root for, I usually loathe it. But this book somehow pulls it off and makes me love it. Because let me tell you, every character in this book is horrible. <laughs> so in this book, we follow a whole bunch of characters that went to college together and basically they had a one person in their friend groups die named Heather which is awkward to read because if you don't know my name is Heather and now it's the high now it's the college reunion they're all back and they're like you know what we're gonna figure out who killed Heather once and for all we go back to timelines we follow different characters and the end page of this whole book it just makes it worth it even more but again like I said really highly unlikable characters. They're all horrible in their own rights, but somehow the writing just makes it so engaging and just kind of has that dark academia feel. I loved it. Speaking of Ashley Winstead, her latest book, The Last Housewife, is another great one. This one's a lot darker. This one's more about cults and more about the concept of men versus women and how women should be treated, which is like in this book, the way men think women are is just horrible, but this book is, ooh, it's intense. We follow a character named Shay who basically gets involved with kind of this sexual cult in um, college and her and her best friend escape and they decide to like never talk about it, never go back to the state of New York, never go back to college and now it's many years later, Shay is your typical housewife and then she hears that her best friend is dead and she is found on that college campus and she's like, what the heck? We said we would never go back and so she decides to go investigate it and she gets kind of deeper and darker into it and it is a book that you're gonna have to be prepared for because it's a book that's gonna mess with your mind. It's a book that is very dark and creepy and just overall scary with the whole cult vibes but goodness me was it amazing. Next up we have My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a fun mystery thriller for sure. This is about a married couple who has two um, kind of teenage kids and you know they're kind of bored with suburbia life. They're like you know what there's not much to do. Maybe we should start you know killing people. Sounds like a great hobby. No it does not just so you're aware. <laughs> and so they decide to plot a murder and things kind of get really out of hand if you wouldn't have guessed it. But it is a fun one that's going to keep you guessing and it's all about like you know who's really telling the truth and you know about this marriage that thinks that you know having fun you know is counting as killing someone. It's really bizarre but it is a great time. It says we're, we all have our secrets to keeping a marriage alive. Ours just happens to be getting away with murder because that's what they want to do. They want to get away with it. It is a wild ride. Highly recommend it. If you're really not into the mystery thriller genre and you're like I don't know where to start. I'm kind of nervous about it. Finley Donovan is Killing It is the perfect book for you. It, def it definitely takes the classic 
um, element of Mr. Thrillers and kind of makes it more funny, more lighthearted. So in case you're like, I'm not really sure if I'm into Mr. Thrillers, I want to try one, but I don't want to get too spooked out. This is a great one. So this one follows a character named Finlay Donovan, who is a thriller writer, and she's having a meeting with her um, agent at Panera, and she's talking about like the latest idea for her next book about an assassin, and da 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 da. And basically, a woman overhears her, leaves her a note saying, "Hey, kill my husband for this amount of money. Kill my husband, and I'll give you this amount of money." And Finlay's like, "Oh, you know, like I'm not really an assassin." And the the woman's like, you know, I just want it done. Just do it. And Finlay's, you know, starting to think about it because she is a single mom with two kids and she's really grasping for finances. So she kind of maybe goes along with it. It is a fun time. It's a book that's going to make you laugh, but it's a great one to start off with. If you're like not sure about Mr. Thrillers, but want to get into it, this is a great one to do that with. Next up, we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is a great one to read kind of on a dark, dreary night. This one follows a whole bunch of characters. It's about a wedding that takes takes place on this island off of Ireland and um, basically someone is found dead and you don't know who died and you don't know who killed them and you kind of have to go through the suspects. Again this is another book with really unlikable characters. Lucy Foley is known for that. I've read two other books of hers and did enjoy them but this one somehow got away with it. I liked it. I think it was definitely the atmospheric tone of the book where it was set on this kind of dark cold island and it had the whole wedding background to it but it's a short and sweet one that's great to read and definitely my favorite by this author and it's one of my favorite thrillers. Much Like You by Carolyn Kepnes. I'm sure you've heard all about this because of the adaptation. Um, I'm only going to recommend the first book because honestly the second book's horrible. Did not even attempt to read the third. Will never attempt to read the third. I only want to talk about the first book, You. You is amazing and an equally amazing audiobook. I don't recommend a lot of audiobooks because personally I don't listen to a lot of audio but somehow I listen to you and it is worth it and I'll tell you why. Because you takes place from the point of view of a stalker so during the audiobook he you know that's written like i'm watching you you know it's you know, i'm watching you walk in here i'm watching you do this it's very creepy great audiobook but we follow a character named joe who works at a bookstore he meets this girl named caroline i think her name's caroline I forget. And he becomes literally obsessed with her. He starts stalking her. He starts following her. He tries to interject himself into her life. And murder may happen. It is amazing. I love it. It's funny as well, but also really dark and creepy because it's about a stalker and about his psychoticness, honestly. But it's amazing. I would not recommend reading the second or third book at all. Honestly, that's just my fully honest opinion. I get that you would like the characters and would want to continue on with their progress, but it's just not worth it. That's just me. But I do also recommend the show. The show's really good. The second season really, I think the first season pretty stayed really true to the first book and the second season kind of really went off of the source material but I didn't care because I did not like the second book at all. And the third season was just, it was interesting for sure. And I will continue to watch the fourth season. I just saw the trailer for it. I'm still feeling very iffy about the fourth season. We'll have to see. But you, the first book is amazing. Next up, let's talk about Grady Hendrix. His books are kind of horror-ish, but I still feel like it's okay to talk about them in this video because they're kind of light horror. I think if I can manage it, you can manage it because if you don't know, I'm the world's biggest scary guy. <laughs> um, I have two of his that I really, really love. My favorite of his for sure is My Best Friend's Exorcism. This takes place in the 80s. It's about two characters that are BFFs and basically one gets possessed by a demon and the other one has to save her and it's just a good 80s time with demonic possession but at the heart of it is a friendship novel and it's a great book. It's a fun book. It's also very grotesque. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's not many scary scenes in it but there are some scenes that you're just like Ugh, it has those in that. Grady Hendrix is known for that but I love this one and I know the adaptation of it just came out. I hopefully have watched it by then. Hopefully I liked it <laughs> but I love this book. Definitely easily my favorite Grady Hendrix novel. Then we have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This is my first Grady Hendrix book because it's got the word vampires in it and if you don't know about me 
I'm obsessed with vampires. Thanks, Buffy. This one takes place in the 90s, I believe, and this follows um, kind of this group of moms who live in this neighborhood, and, you know, they have their typical suburban, like, um, fan, like you know, life, and they start a book club, and then basically this newcomer guy comes in, and he starts, like, you know, one of the moms notices that he's a little bit different than the other people. Maybe, perhaps, he's a vampire. This book, again, it's not super scary, but it's definitely got some grotesque scenes in it. I will say it's a little scarier than my best friend's exorcism. I don't know, but it's a good time. It's very interesting. It's got some creepy stuff in it. I really enjoyed it. If you like vampires, I would check it out. Next up, we have Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, my favorite Alice Feeney book. This book is a spin on the classic tale, Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. If you know that plot, you kind of get the gist of Daisy Darker. We follow Daisy, who goes to her Nana's house because it's her birthday, and it's like on Halloween night, and her Nana lives in this, like, house on the top of an island, that kind of where the tide goes in and out, you're stuck for the whole time. Like, that's just how it is. And basically, um, her she goes there her mom's there her dad's there her grandmother's there and her two sisters are there and at the strike of midnight somebody dies and hour by hour somebody else dies and you have to figure out who was doing this and why and it's a very fun you know take on Agatha Christie's classic also very atmospheric with the kind of dark and creepy sea house with the waves and the darkness and all that stuff I loved it perfect book to read in fall. On a dark, cold, rainy night, this book is amazing, and I really, really loved it. And we have The One by John Mars. I've read two other John Mars books. This one is my favorite. This one is th a thriller, but I would mainly classify it as like a, a soap opera thriller. Does that make any sense? Probably not. But basically in this book, we have this app who can figure out your soulmate, and it's like really accurate. So we follow a lot of characters, like a lot of characters, they figure out their soulmates. We also have the serial killer in this too that also finds a soulmate, but is also a serial killer. So we have that's kind of our big thrilling aspect of it. And it was enjoyable. It looks thick, it's a long novel, it's over 400 pages, but it flies by because there's so many characters, but you're going to be invested in it. It's a great book, I would say, again, like Finlay Donovan, where it's good for beginners when it comes to thrillers because it's not like overly scary because we have all these other characters and kind of there's like a big thrilling aspect, but it's not the main part of the book, if you will. I loved it. Can't recommend it enough. It was definitely a surprise of a book that I read that I fell in love with. Next up, we have The Night Swim by Megan Golden. This book is a great summer thriller, if you will, because you can't tell there's water on it. In this book, we follow a character named Rachel who has this podcast, a true crime podcast, and she decides to cover this really small town where the town's golden boy got accused of rape, and she's following the trial as it goes on. When she gets to the small town, she starts getting letters from this girl saying that her sister was murdered a time ago only was ruled as like a suicide but she knows her sister was murdered so Rachel's kind of investigating both of these cases one with um, the golden boy who was accused of rape and also about this girl that died 20 years ago was it really a suicide or was it truly a murder and it takes place like I said in a very small kind of beachy seaside town and it is amazing I love the twist in this book I love the small town aspect of it just really enjoyed it it's definitely my favorite Megan Golden book if you're looking for a great quick summer thriller to read look no further and then we have the sundown motel by simone st james i've read two other simone st james books and honestly i really like them all i think i gave them all four out of five this one's my favorite because i think it's got the best atmospheric writing out of all of them honestly maybe the setting probably the setting's really good in this book we follow um a character with a character named carly who decides to start working at the sundown motel where her aunt worked years ago only her aunt was never found like her aunt just kind of disappeared within thin air and her aunt also worked at the small hotel and she's like i want to investigate i want to figure out what exactly happened to my aunt and so she goes to start working there and some kind of paranormal weird things start happening you know this is a very seedy kind of dark motel so I loved it for the setting. It was great in that regard. All of Simone St. James books have that little bit of a paranormal aspect to them that I think makes them amazing. All of them also are very atmospheric in that regard with the whole paranormal aspect, but I love this one the most because of its set kind of in this really seedy, dark motel where you're not like sure if really what's happening is happening. You don't ever know, but it's a great one. Next up, we have The Nothing, Next up, we have the Nothing Man by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is a recent for me and 
this is not like a hundred percent one of my favorite thrillers but i think i like it so much because of the overall plot of it in this book we follow a character that is a security guard at this kind of grocery store then one day he sees this like kind of new display of books and he's like oh interesting and it's called the nothing man and he's like holy crap it's a book about um it's a autobiography book about a woman that named Eve Black who was attacked by the serial killer called the Nothing Man years ago. Her family was killed and she was the only one left unscathed and so she's writing a memoir about it and this guy Jim the security guard is reading it and he's like oh my gosh because what do you know he is actually the Nothing Man. That's right folks we got a book about a serial killer who found a book about himself so it's a book within a book and it is interesting. <laughs> In this book Jim is is reading it and you get to see snippets of the actual book The Nothing Man and he's reading it trying to see if Eve is figuring out who he is because he hasn't been The Nothing Man in years and he doesn't know what is gonna happen so I think this book is great because of the whole plot like it's a book about a serial killer who finds a book about himself like that is wild to me. Catherine Ryan Howard writes some amazing like plots I don't love the execution on that much but this one's definitely my favorite by hers. If you want a really interesting book about a serial killer and kind of the inner workings of it and how he's reading a book about himself, this one's a great one to check out. And the last book I want to talk about is a horror book, but I still think it's manageable because if I can read it, I think you can read it. And that is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This one is another kind of haunted house book, if you will. In this book, we follow a character named Sam, who is a best-selling horror author. He to this house called Kill Creek to do an interview. When he gets there, there's other authors there. There's another horror author. There's like kind of a middle grade kind of um, horror author. Can't think of like R.L. Stein, And we have the guy that's doing the whole interview, if you will and basically the whole task is to spend the night in this house in this interview and they'll get a certain amount of money but then they learn that the haunted house has stuck with them for a really long time. It's creepy, it's atmospheric, it's got the haunted house elements, there's some definitely scary vibes in this book. It's probably one of the scariest books I've read, I'll say that, but it was interesting, definitely one of my favorites. So there you have my favorite all-time mystery thriller books. I've read a lot and the list keeps growing and I'm happy to say that there's a lot in this video. Like all of them I love and would highly, highly recommend. I would love to know some of your favorite all-time mystery thrillers. Please let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.